so you're going to be recorded now. Um, so you can go back and watch them as I draw. Um, I think drawing it, to me, it's more visual, and I think it helps. So when we're focusing on the Calvin cycle, we're going to be focusing on carbon because that's what we're fixing. And so I'm going to represent carbon as green circles. So this would be carbon dioxide, so I'll put a C in there so it reminds you that's carbon. Carbon dioxide is one carbon, of course, two oxygens. I don't really care about the oxygens. But the first step that happens is that we take three molecules of carbon dioxide, so we take three of these, and we're going to add it to this molecule called RUBP, ribulose bisphosphate. It's a five-carbon sugar that is already present in the stroma of the chloroplast. So it's just floating around, waiting to be used. So if I add a 5-carbon molecule to a 1-carbon molecule, again, we will have three of these, what do we get? Six. A 6-carbon six molecule. How many? Three. Three of them. Here's the thing about this 6-carbon molecule. It's so unstable, we don't even give it a name. It doesn't last very long. It immediately splits in half, and then we have these three carbon molecules, three carbon sugars, called PGA. But how many do I have of them? Six. Six. Okay, see how we have the same number of carbons still? We just chopped all those six carbon molecules in half, and now we have six of these three carbon molecules called PGA. It stands for phosphoglycerate. You don't really have to remember that. Um, it's just not Professional Golfers Association. Okay? So we have six of these things, 63 carbon molecules. Next thing that happens, we take that PGA and we turn it into something called G3P, or some books call it PGAL. It's really the same thing, just a different name. I don't even think I wrote the word up there. PG, PGAL stands for phosphoglyceraldehyde, I think. Or as G3P stands for glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. It just basically tells you where the phosphate groups attach, which carbon it's attached to. It's attached to the third one. But anyways, it looks the same, though. One, two, three. We're only focused on the carbons. What we've changed are all the different side chains, like the hydroxyl groups and the phosphate gets added and then removed. All those changes require energy, and we get the energy from our ATP molecule and our NADPH molecule. That supplies the energy and the hydrogen that's needed to convert PGA to PGAL. But for all our intensive purposes, it looks the same because it's still just three carbons. So now we have six of these PGALs. One of them exits the cycle. This will eventually become glucose. Again, glucose is C6H12O6. So how many carbons do I have in glucose? Six. How many carbons did I have in G3P? Six. Three. Three. So how many G3Ps do I need? Two. Two. So after one cycle, we don't have enough carbons to really make one full glucose yet. That's going to be important later. The other five are recycled. So we take those five of these three carbon molecules and we convert it, this is on the next slide, but I'm going to draw it right here, into three of these five carbon molecules. Does the math make sense? Fifteen carbons, fifteen carbons, right? But what does that require? We're breaking bonds, making bonds. That requires what? Energy. We have to use more ATP to get this done. It requires enzymes and energy, so that has to happen. So we'll talk about that next. But again, two of those G3Ps or those PGALs are used to make uh, sugars or glucose by the plant.
or the photosynthetic organism if it's not a plant. So that part we just drew, the restocking of RUBP, I guess I should have drawn it here, so I'll draw it again. We take those three P gals, no, sorry, five, five P gals, and we use a little bit of ATP energy, and that gives us our three five carbon skeleton chains, which is restocking RUBP. RUBP is what we started with, hence we call it a cycle. We've start, started and stopped in the same place. And so that RUBP can go back and pick up more carbon dioxide. And the process can happen again. As long as we supply the Calvin cycle with energy, the Calvin cycle can turn as long as there's carbon dioxide available. And that's how the light reaction is tied to the Calvin cycle. It's, it basically, it's like the battery that runs the cycle. As long as that battery is charged, as long as we have ATP, NADPH available, Calvin cycle to take carbon dioxide and turn it into glucose. Technically turn it into PGAL, but PGAL becomes glucose later on. PGAL can become other things too, which is also important. We'll get to that later. Isn't that a lot better than writing down all those words? Yeah. I think so. I can do that anyway. Oh, jeez. All right, so here's a picture of it. I like the picture because obviously it shows you it's a cycle. It also shows the carbons as these little gray spheres. This one's kind of confusing because it has all these weird words like phosphoglycerate, 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, glyceraldehyde-3-phosphate. So I like this one better. Yeah. Let's get rid of all the words. Look at the pictures. There's our 5-carbon RUBP. I'm not saying you shouldn't know the words, but let's focus on the process first and then apply the words later. There's your RUBP. Picks up CO2, becomes a 6-carbon compound that immediately splits into a 3-carbon compound. You have 6 of them. You get some ATP, NADPH. Looks the same, but now it's PGAL. Because the hydroxides and stuff on the side chains are different. That can be used to make organic compounds. But we have to recycle the RUBP, so we basically send 5 of them back to turn back into ribulose bisphosphate. Just by a show of hands, who thinks this is easier than the light reaction? Really? I think it's so much easier. I think the light reaction is way more confusing. You've got so many things going on, electrons moving, protons flowing, ATP being made. This is just goes around and around and around. All right, I'm going to show you this animation. This, is, this animation, I, I, I think this is like the best animation. Oh, let me go back. Come on. Well, why don't you click on it? According to our diagram, I'm going to circle the reactants in red. That's a reactant. There's the reactant there. Carbon dioxide is a reactant. There's that reactant there. Here are the products, all the arrows leading out. There's glucose. Oh, I should change color. What color do you want it to be? Green. Green? Okay. Why did you try to roll green? Purple. We'll do purple. Okay. There's glucose. Okay. There's glucose. It's a product. There's oxygen. Uh, there's oxygen as a product. Uh, what's going on there? I don't see that on the product side. But it's there. Why is water there? Yeah. Not exactly. Think back to the reactions that we've talked about. Two different types of chemical reactions that take place. The ones that we use to build molecules, the ones we use to break molecules. John? It's a condensation reaction. The Calvin cycle is a condensation reaction. Which means if we're putting carbons together, if we're adding molecules together, we have to be removing water. And so it's a condensation reaction. And so water is a product. So technically, the equation looks like this. Let me erase her out. I'll just 
just wrote the same thing. That was smart. No, it should that should be right. Never mind. I erased the wrong thing. Fix that. Six O two. I should have plus six H two O. Oh shoot. Down here. H two O. Six of them. Which then changes this over here to twelve. We'll talk about why tomorrow, but that's the actual true equation. Because it, it reduces. Really what's happening is, you know, oxygen's given off by the plant, goes off in the atmosphere. Glucose is gonna be used by the plant. Um, water, the water just kinda doesn't really go anywhere, it just gets reused and but I want to point out that's it. And we'll explain why tomorrow, why that has to be written that way. But I don't want to make your brains hurt too much. Too late? All right, so we're going to watch this, kind of, this video on...